Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. So this video is a part of a series where we want to implement a social media application based on microservices. And our main goal is to learn the many aspects of implementing microservices as well as some of the challenges and how to tackle such challenges so that we can enjoy the benefits of microservices and still address some of the complications that are normally around. In the previous video, we have finished implementing the provided password or encrypting the provided password and also comparing some provided externally provided passwords to the one that we have in our database to make sure that they are the same. If you're interested in that, you can check the last three videos. These are related to the password implementation. In this project, we use a test driven development approach, which means that we normally start by writing the tests that we want to use or that exactly that will act as the validation for our functionality. So before we go into production code, we write a couple of tests that we consider to be relevant. And based on these tests, we will then develop our code, right? I have a video at the very beginning of this playlist, if I'm not mistaken, it's video number four, where I discuss some basics of test driven development. And this, I believe, can be very helpful for you to understand the mindset behind this series of videos, right? So if maybe you are not used to, to test-driven development, then it may be the case that you are, um, you may be a little bit lost at the beginning if you're like thinking, okay, why is he writing so many tests? Why is, isn't he directly going into production code? That's exactly our goal, right? So our goal is to write tests and then just enough production code so that our tests pass. Of course, I'm not following all the rules 100%. So there is still some deviation. There is still some code that we will write that is not going to be tested. And this email implementation that we we'll start working today will be an example of this, but not of something that we we'll completely ignore, but of something that we will use something that's called a mock in order for us to correctly execute our tests, still verify the functionality that we are looking or that we want to implement, but not having to use the full implementation of our system. So the idea here is that if I have a mailing, if I have a mailing, mailing system and I implement a fully working mailing, mailing system in our, in our tests, then every time we run the test, we'll send an email <laughs> and we don't want that, right? I mean, we have already some, most of the services that are out there, they have limited quotes for emails. If you want to use something that's a little bit more professional than just setting up a, a STMP server for, for your email with, with node mailer. So if you want to use something like some third party API, which we will hear, then you probably have a quote for the free, um, for the free package. And because we have this limitation, we don't want to be sending a lot of emails, especially not when we are running tests, right? So unit tests would be the case that we want to mock how this email sending implementation is actually executed. So this was going to be, I think, the big point of our playlist here and oh, playlist, let's say for those who are watching the email playlist, but um, the our email functionality, right? And this will also push us towards using a very interesting design pattern, which is called dependency inversion. So this is going to be, from my perspective, very interesting. It's something we haven't done before in this playlist or in this series of videos for, social, for our social media application. So let's go right into it, right? Um, enough of discussions. We'll start implementing the email verification. So the first step, which I think we have to work with is then this is the, this is the, my IDE, if it's the first time you're seeing it. So I use WebStorm, it, you can use VS Code, whatever 
uh, you prefer you can use atom doesn't matter all of them should have the basic functionalities of autocomplete and maybe some code checking linting some prettier formatting all these basic things that we set up um, and we also use ourselves in this project so to begin with our implementation we actually need something right so whenever you are implementing a service from a third party you normally need an api key right so you will need some api key and you will need probably some api secret right so you have normally these two things or let's say an api public key and an api secret key or private key right as you as you prefer and of course you are not going to bake these variables into your source code because your source code is going to be published and it can be retrieved over the network so whatever you bake into your application and maybe this is not the case or it's not as easy to fetch the source code from a from a back-end application but still it's not secure and definitely not recommendable to include these variables into your source code because they will if it, the, in the worst case scenario if you manage to produce pro protect all your code they are still committed to your github repository right so even if you have a private github repository everyone that has access to that github repository will have access to those variables of course you don't want to include them into your source code so here what we are going to do is we are going to use what's called a dot env pattern right so here i have as you can see three files already and this dot env dot dev and dot env dot production these are the files that i'm working with i'm not going to open them and as you can see they are also a little bit great here so they are not committed to the hippo um, but these are the files where i store the keys that we will be using so before we start implementing the email we need to make sure that we can retrieve this information from our env files and to do that there is a very nice plugin that is called env right dot env but i don't want to use just dot env i want to do and i want to do something a little bit different and go a little bit beyond and there is this other plugin which is called dot env dash safe now let me show you here in the npm registry in the dot env safe so if i just look for dot env safe this should give me some result exactly so here is the package dot env safe safe and it is virtually identical to dot env but ensures that all necessary environment variables are defined after reading from dot env so how does this work we create a .env.example file which is going to contain all the keys that we want to have but empty values right and this file is committed to our repository now everyone who clones our repository or who pulls code from our repository and they try to start our project the .env safe plugin is going to check for this file and see what are the required keys and then it's going to look for the actual .env file or whatever path you specify and it's going to load these variables and if there is something missing then it is going to complain right as you can see here the the documentation also provides an example of a missing key so the idea here is that we want to use this dot env dot example as a template for us to set up our local environment variables and this is very important because it will prevent us because this dot env is not committed right this dot env dot example will make sure that we keep track of all the keys that we need in our application and that they are provided before we start the code otherwise it can can get really messy if you have a lot of 
third-party applications that are running on your server and we expect to have them especially with OAuth with OpenID Connect that we are going to implement with email sending probably some secrets from Docker probably some secrets from Kubernetes so a lot of things that we would need in our application if we don't have a place that lists all of them then we would need to go through the source code and this is going to get very messy very quickly so we will already start the right way we will we will install this env save package give it a couple of seconds until it installs and we also need to install and this we can save as a dev dependency the types package types slash dot env dash safe so this is going to give us the necessary types because we are using typescript here good so the first thing that we already saw in the documentation is that we need to create a dot env dot example file right and this we can add to our repository so now that we have a dot env dot example file I would like to add a couple of variables here. So for our email, we will have a node mailer. So just to give you an overview of what we are going to implement in our email functionality, we will implement a very flexible class that can receive as an argument to its constructor, whatever email API we want to use. So we will implement not only the node mailer, but we'll also use one third party API service that I already worked with in the past. And I find it quite intuitive to work with, which is called node, um, sorry, MailJet, right? And we will, I will work with MailJet because I also want to have a custom email for the social media application based on our domain. So this is, more easily set up if I use the MailJet API. Now this is not you're not required to use it. They have a free uh, free quote or a free package that you can use up to six thousand emails per month. But since many people prefer to work with Node Mailer, we start with Node Mailer here, and then we move to MailJet. And also we will implement a mock implementation for our tests, right? So just in case you've never seen that before, Node Mailer is our initial package, is a module to allow easy s -cake email sending. This is the first one we will work with, then we will work with a more, um, let's say specific implementation or a some uh, product that is out there so we have an email api that we can use also with other languages so i find this quite intuitive if you are if you want to whatever work with other languages i mean i'm not promoting their service nor anything but for me it's just something that i will use in this project so in case you are wondering why is he using mailjet that's the reason it's just personal preference so here I need to have an API key right something like this and let's say public right so I am not entirely sure whether MailJet needs to have as many API keys but this is just for an example right so let's say we have a public and a private API key and then we have the node environment right and why do I have the node environment well, that's because I would like to have the production or development set as early as, early as possible in, in my um, program, even though Node does that for me and development and production are the two environments that are assumed by other applications to use it, I still like to explicitly say that it's going to be present in our application. So now that I have this node underscore env, the node mailer API key and the node mailer API key public, then what I can do is I can come to the index.ts file where we first set up our application. And then here I'm going to import the .env safe. So .env from 
dot env safe, right? And this you can call it like this. And once I have the dot env, I simply call dot env dot config, right? So if I have the dot env dot config, then I can pass a couple of parameters, a couple of options to this config. And the first option that I'm going to pass is a path. And the path is going to be dependent on my process dot env dot node env. But for the moment, I will simply just say dot env, right? So that would be path dot resolve. Actually, here, I think this would be even passed by default, just the env. So let's see what happens if I try to start my application like this. And it should complain, I believe. Exactly. So it's complaining. And why is it complaining? It's because the .env file does not have the variables we have defined in the .env.example, right? So in the .env, I have nothing. I have an empty file. So here I need to implement the keys that are defined in my .env.example. So here I can say API key public is one, two, three, four public. Then the private is one, two, three, four private. And the node env is going to be dev. Let's, let's call it dev just for us to see that there is a difference that we can actually set it here. Now, if I come and I start my application again, now this should not complain because now the variables are present. And as you can see, everything goes smoothly. And we have this console.log showing that the application started successfully. Now, more interesting, if I come here and I simply write down process.env.nodeenv and I give a um, console.log here, then this should print dev, right? Exactly. So it prints dev, which is set up in the .env file. Now, if I change this to development, then I would have to stop the application and it started again because it does not detect changes in the .env file. But now it prints development. And if I come back here and I print console.log process.env. What was the name? Node mailer API key private. This is going to be the same as we have defined there. So one, two, three, four private. So with this process, we can ensure that whenever we work with code, that depends on environmental, uh, environmental environment variables, we have them all set in the file that we will work with. In our case, future here, I will be using the .env.dev and the .env.production, and I will set up a path based on my process.env.node.env so that I can select the file that best suits me. In our case here, it's not going to play that much of a role at the moment because we still don't have a production deployment. But in any case, I think that that's enough for this video. This was how to set up the environment, uh, environment variables and use them in our application. So in the next video, we will come back and we will start working with the email functionality in our node express application. Thank you very much and see you in the next video. Bye bye.